بسم الله الذي لا اله سواه والحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه حمدا يليق بجلال وجهه وبعظيم سلطانه والصلاة والسلام على نبيه الصادق الأمين وآله الطيبين الطاهرين وصحابته الصالحين الميامين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم اكتبنا منهم آمين يا رب Of the effects of the noob my dear brothers and sisters that our deen teaches us about is um, that every time the abd commits a dhanb in particular when there is not when it is not followed by the proper tawbah that it produces what is called the uqda the uqda is like you know what uqda means from aqada which means to tie and that's a feeling of in stranglement. I think most of us here and perhaps all have experienced something like that sometime. That is a aqda. You f- you can describe it as a aqda. You don't feel anymore what you may feel now that there is space in your sadr, in your chest. You feel subhanallah constricted. And you feel as though a, a knot, sometimes you feel it on a particular area in your chest. As a knot. Uqda. And that is, as a consequence, sometimes of zunub. And that will lead to that which we call as distress, and anxiety, and depression, and other things. Oftentimes, in again secular psychology, because its philosophy and its epistemology does not derive from a one of Tawheed, deals with those issues in ways that are very, very superficial. And that are very, very chemical. Yet, subhanAllah, and the cure from this in our philosophy and epistemology is mujarrab wa ana ala dhalika shaheed and I bear witness to that for sometimes the key is this is where to look this is where to look an example amongst many many examples and we are not intending to be exhaustive in our examples and listing and discourse but Alhamdulillah, specific enough so that we cover within these good few days that we have together enough material that we can also uh, understand and, and comprehend and, and, and not forget easily. Uh, an example that I, I subhanAllah, I find very beautiful, uh, that an, an imam of great intellect and of, mashallah, uh, very beautiful spiritual devotional capacities, Al Imam uh, Ibn Sirin rahimahullah ta'ala is related to have said, look at this, that Annahu Asabahu Dain. And it's word Asabahu uh, Dain is interesting, it's like he was uh, afflicted, he was stricken by death. But this time he felt Ram uh, inside of him. Maybe be, uh, before he, this didn't occur, and maybe rarely was he on the, in that. And this time, this abd who knows what tawakkul means, who knows who the razaq is, and this is Ibn Sirin, not just anyone. And he felt, he said, ghan. And ghan is how would you describe ghan? Hmm? He felt hmm? like constricted. Run. Clouded. Clouded also. But his qalb was still qalb. So he said, what doctor did he go to? 
This is what he said. فَعَرِفْتُ ذَلِكَ مِنْ ذَنْبٍ أَصَبْتُهُ قَبْلَ أَرْبَعِينَ سَنَةٍ Then I knew this is because of a zamb I committed 40 years ago. Every zunub, every zamb, I'm sorry, all zunub are traced back to one thing. All zunub are traced back to one origin, and that is ishraq, the opposite of tawheed and ikhlas. All zunub, remember, remember tawheed is the unification equation of all events in the universe. Some of you know what I mean and why I use this analogy, huh? And the concept of the unification theory, the equation, the ultimate equation that the scientists of the external laws of physics are trying to discover and they know it exists. They believe in Tawheed. That all the forces of the universe and all the events in the physical universe, events of the universe, can be described in one equation because of the orderliness and the unity in this universe. In that spiritual world and the nafsani world and the qalbi world, the equation is called tawheed. And tawheed means affirmation of oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every of them is the, the result of the presence or attachment in our qulub to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All dhunub are the result of that. All types of dhunub, alhamdulillah, shaitani or dahimi or, 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 or sabu'i or kalbi, all the dhunub are the result of a deficiency, whether major or minor, in our tawheed. And consequently also, the depressions, the anxieties, the, you know, the tendencies, suicidal tendencies, and distress, and, and, and the zuqad, all of them are traced back to the source of, namely, lack of tawheed, in particular of rububiyya, and consequently, the loop. Sometimes one may say, but I do so many good things, alhamdulillah. But that doesn't mean that my tawheed is perfect. That's number one. Number two, I may do th- things externally only, but my qalb is not involved in them. Remember, I may, as we have pointed out yesterday, also, I may be doing good things externally, following the external laws of Ibudiyah, quote unquote, the external laws of Ibudiyah. But my qalb is attached to the means themselves, the cause itself. Sometimes we forget that. And that is a cause sometimes of very serious breakdowns inside of us. Even if externally I'm in salah, in sawm, in zakah, in sadaqah, kada, kada. And in doing actively things following the law of Allah Azza wa Jalla of cause and effect externally, but I don't follow it with my qalb, meaning, again, my attachment in my qalb, my reliance in my qalb is not on the creator of cause and effect, but on the imperative of material causality itself. but on the cause itself, on the means itself. That's why I remember, I remind myself, Allah knows first, and then you. That's why when the means is absent, what happens? I am afraid. I'm anxious. I'm insecure. That is when it tells me, to me, it tells me exactly that I am in a state of ishraq. 
hopefully it's not a shirk al-akbar that I even entertain intellectually but in this sense and tawakkul is simply an, um, a very natural flow from tawheed and ikhlas and every good virtue and every maqam all of it is a result of the extent of tawheed and leads also to the completion of Tawheed. I repeat, my dear brothers and sisters, and this is also, alhamdulillah, this is we learn in cure. Wallahi, and it is mujarrab. Wallahi, it is experienced. And I don't need to go into detail. Ya'lam Allah. Wallahi, alladhi la ilaha illahu. What doctors wouldn't be able to do for years with chemical medications. By the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through sometimes the jazba to the realization of the affirmation of tawheed of rububiyya as well or through some gradual struggle until one realizes that and then and then it's gone never again never again and sometimes when certain fluctuations come back they are weak but one realizes aha I have done this and I have done that and my tawheed is missing turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like the child running into his mother because the child knows only his mother remember the word only his mother tawheed Tawheed, only his mother. The abd should know only Allah Azza wa Jal. Know truly only, runs only to Allah Azza wa Jal. Because he is the only one that exists for him and for her. Run back to him. Run back to him. In other words, reaffirm your Tawheed. Reaffirm your Tawheed. And the stronger that reaff- the reaffirmation of Tawheed, the quicker and uh, the, the, the cure comes inshallah and the ease follows and the qalb expands again and gradually it becomes a shield against beginning to experience those forms of uqad, distress and anxiety يعني يطيب العيش after that العيش is طيب regardless of what happens around regardless of what happens around like that alim rahimahullah ta'ala who when jailed finally because he was enjoining that which is good and forbidding that which is evil as alim rahimahullah ta'ala in ways that harmed uh, no one unjustly and was put in jail talking about um, something like eight, eight centuries ago then when he entered into the jail which was actually a fortress and the fortress when he entered inside then he said فَضَرَبْنَا بَيْنَهُمْ بِسُورٍ لَهُ بَابٌ بَاطِنُهُ فِيهِ الرَّحْمَةِ وَظَاهِرُهُ مِنْ قِبَلِهِ الْعَذَابِ Allah Akbar. And then his his most famous student, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, and full fledged Mushtahid scholar, who wants uh, who goes to visit him so that he gives him strength inside the fortress. He says, like I come out strengthened because of all the tib of the Aish I see in him inside the jail. Because his qalb was never with the khalq. So when he entered that fortress, he said, and we sat uh, between them, that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking of the day of judgment, but the, the Adam spoke those words in this dunya, he said, and we sat between them a wall, inside of which there is rahmah. 
outside of which there is torment. Did you? When he entered the jail, he read that ayah. Now he says, in other words, I am in rahmah. They are in torment outside of the jail. Who is the prisoner? Who is the prisoner? No, no, it's not the name. No, no. Who is the prisoner? The world, the outside, those who put him in there are the prisoners. He's free. And now he's off even free externally from them. He did. Tahqiq al ubudiyya He did. He, now he's here. That's beyond my control. But I was never with them to begin with. I was with them with my body and gently and kindly and respectfully, not disturbing people's rights, being good and gentle and kind. But my qalb was, his qalb was never with them. So when he entered, he said, now I'm in Jannah. Literally, he said that. And then, the student, this alim, rahmahullah ta'ala, when he says, I enter, visit him, you know, to give him support. And then what I see of Tibul Aish in which he is, in the way he is, I come out strengthened. I come out strengthened, my dear brothers and sisters. The noob commit, the noob produce this uqda distress as and the opposite ta'a of Allah Azza wa Jal produces the opposite in sharah al-sadr ta'a obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala produces the opposite in sharah al-sadr the qalb feels elated expanded the chest feels expanded the less attachments we build uh, to our qulubs other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the freer the qalb the freer the qalb and maybe I should talk about freedom a little bit here because freedom is ultimately ultimately in our philosophy and epistemology this is where we should look at it the freedom is the freedom of the qalb ultimately freedom is always begs the question freedom from what? And from whom? And of what? And of whom? When we speak in the secular sense and in secular democracy about freedom, basically the philosophy behind it, as we also study uh, the works of uh, philosophers and political philosophers and so on, I would help them formulate, I think, their dialectic. And it becomes this, as you look at it, it becomes this. It's actually a freedom of the nafs from the khalq. It's actually a freedom, or a dizzy, let me put it, that freedom is, is attained by disengaging the nafs from the khalq to whatever degree possible. And I'm not going to talk about the details and how the political system uh, formed that and what maximizes that and, and, and what are the constraints within that still. It's all relative. But it is a freedom, it is a disengagement, a freedom generated by the disengagement of the nafs from the khalq. That's why we speak of our rights. Versus the others, freedom from you, and you, and you, and you, and, and X, and Y, and Z, etc. So that I do what I like. I means my nafs in that, in, that, in that psychology and in that philosophy. There is a higher stage than the khalq, the nafs. And the nafs is not tangible. It's a higher dimension than the khalq. And since I go from the dimension of the khalq, and I free myself from the khalq in every possible aspect, economically and so-called politically, etc., and, socio- and socially, and, and etc., etc., so that I enjoy my nafs, I give my nafs its happiness. I have to free it, I have to disengage it from a lower dimension. And that is the dimension of the khalq and a higher dimension of the nafs. And I agree with them 
in this sense, helping their dialectic in this way, with some conditions, and it is true because uh, we know for a fact that in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which uh, exact mathematics show, in a, in a mathematical uh, sense, uh, many of you, some of you would, would know that, hafizakumullah, that in the world of mathematics, which is, has been translated definitely into physics, and that's a fact also, that when we go to higher dimensions, topologically, we attain higher degrees of freedom. SubhanAllah. That's the law of Allah. In the real exact math world. When you go to higher dimensions, topologically, we attain higher degrees of freedom. Example of that, that you can all understand. Two-dimensional space. In two-dimensional space, we have the freedom to move only in in the plane. In X and Y directions. Only. Let's call it width and length. And you move in a plane only. When you're in a two-dimensional space, that's all the universe you're conscious of. Understand? Basic math. Geometry. Now, when you go to high school, etc., you learn that there is a space in which you really are called three-dimensional space. And in three-dimensional space, we added how many dimensions? We added one more dimension only, which is height, vertical, height and depth. And therefore, when you move to a higher dimensional space, now you can move you can move in a sphere. You have all that freedom. In a two-dimensional world, you can move only in a plane. The f- you, can't, you don't have the freedom of being moving elsewhere. Elsewhere doesn't exist. When you add one dimension, you have that degree of freedom. Now you can move in a sphere. All of that. Mathematically, that's why the matrices came into existence and, and, uh, and the great uh, quote-unquote German mathematician who introduced the concept that led to modern physics and quantum mechanics and, and led to the discovery of the concept of many universes and of 11-dimensional universes. No more science fiction. This is real physics. And therefore, higher degrees of freedom that we cannot visualize, but we can only conceptualize mathematically. But do tell us about the existence of other universes in which there are more degrees of freedom. My point is, having this settled, the nafs and the khalq, from the khalq to the nafs, that's one higher dimension. And therefore, indeed, freedom. So, the freedom that we talk about in global culture nowadays and in globalization is freedom of the nafs from the khalq. But that philosophy is incomplete. Because the way it understands the human nature is this. There is a khalq outside and there is a nafs. And many philosophers and scholars talk about that. And some of them wrote very, very famous books. That, and some of these people are, are great, quote-unquote, experts in strategic planning for governments, for a theory, a working theory of the world. Did you hear that? A working theory of of the world, how to run the world, etc. Also based on who the human being is. 
and what is the self, and what is, the, what is reason, and so on. And the concepts of how to satisfy the self with the use of reason, reason meaning now positivist science, in order to maximize the disengagement of the nafs from the khalq, and how to do that collectively in society and now in the world. And that is based on the fact, that they see fact, is that there is a nafs, and that's the highest dimension. And these words of dimension, etc., as, as I said, I am, uh, in, in other words, helping them complete their, their dialectics. And that's the way I look at it. Now, Islamically, is there a nafs only? There is something called the qalb. And the nafs is states and levels, as we have established. And there is the qalb. And the qalb, in our philosophy, is in a higher dimension than the nafs. So, do you want freedom? Of course we want freedom. Freedom of what? From what? Now, we do not stop as Muslims at the level, and I'm helping us understand that, we do not stop at the level of the freedom of the self from the environment, from the world, from the people. But we go a higher dimension. The qalb exists and the qalb has to be satisfied because the theory of freedom, the contemporary theory of freedom, is that there are forces within us. They must be satisfied. The nafs. Thymos, isothymos, megalothymos, which is basically different manifestations of the nafs. But there is the qalb. Qalb is a higher dimension. And it is the qalb that connects to the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The qalb has to be cultivated, has to be nurtured, has to be satisfied also. It is a higher dimension. Because the nafs, as the nafs, as you have talked about, is not connected to the higher dimension that is the heavenly beings. But the qalb is. And therefore, when we rise philosophically and epistemologically to the level of the qalb, now we are attaining what? Higher degrees of freedom. Now the freedom of the qalb from the nafs. Because if we stop at the freedom of the nafs from the qalb, partially legitimate of a discourse it is. And blind of the existence of the higher dimension, we would be doing injustice to the fulfillment of happiness of the human being that basically all systems like to pursue and claim to pursue. Going to a higher dimension generates higher degrees of freedom. And thus, by this law, mathematically formulated, and by the way, what they do nowadays in pos- trying to make even psychology positivist is borrowing from math concepts, etc. Trying to make it as exact as possible. Let us use that argument. And since mathematically it is established that going to higher, deg- higher dimensions generates higher degrees of freedom. And therefore, the greater freedom that we shall enjoy and should pursue is the freedom of the qalb from the nafs. There is a certain freedom at the level of the nafs from the qalb, yes. However, taken, al- taken, taken alone, without incorporating 
the rest of the, the inner creation of the human being, we are going to do injustice to the human being. I sometimes look at it just like when scientists for you know, decades and maybe centuries wanted to deny the existence of the quantum world and that there is only classical physics. Only, only, only. And they continued to do that until actually recently. Even the one who did, who's, who's instrumental in discovering quantum physics wanted to deny the quantum world. And now, it's, it's proven by experiments. It exists. Most of the technology that you know of computers is based on quantum physics, tunneling effects and, and so on and so forth. Until the existence of the quantum world, a deeper dimension was acknowledged, we would not be able to have this freedom of technology, so to speak. Whether it is good or bad, that's a different question. Until human beings continue to ignore the component of the qalb and the world of the qalb, and acknowledge only that which is nafsani and that which is external, the solution will always be inadequate and incomplete and suffocating and it will be freedom of the nafs only. Established. That the freedom of the qalb is higher freedom. By the very law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that everyone acknowledges in the world of in the world of the abstract mathematics now has not, not any more abstract has been incorporated into most uh, practical ways in the world of physics. We were talking about the zunub and their impact on the nufus, on the qalb, and the uqda, and that led us to the freedom. And being free from zunub is having the qalb freed from the nafs. Having the qalb freed from the nafs so that the qalb attains greater freedom and thus begins to enjoy its happiness so that we begin to enjoy the happiness. And subhanAllah, our scholars have talked about this in different words, but the, Allah wills that with time, uh, it's interesting, it's interesting that the very the very ulum that people use to deny the creator are there subhanallah to be evidence against us the very means sometimes that human beings use to deny truth will be meant are meant to ascertain the truth just like Musa alayhi salam and Fir'aun Fir'aun who took Musa, I mean, look at this means cause and effect, look at this. I mean, he took Musa into his own house. And the plan was to destroy everyone who, wa- who will come in the future to destroy his kingdom. So he saw it. And he did everything. The means that he followed was so that that doesn't happen. The very means he pursued led him to take Subhanallah, to take Musa into his own household, to rule him. Do you see this? Cause and effect, huh? Cause and effect externally. Qalb is free from that, should be free from that. Sometimes the very cause I follow to get something is, could be intended for it by Allah, but could be intended to do exactly what I do not want to do. Wallahi, it is proven. The very path I follow of cause and effect, not to attain something I'm afraid of, that very path will lead to exactly that which I wanted to run away from. So, sometimes, yes, the very things we do to prevent certain things are meant actually to ascertain them by Allah. And that's when our iman and our tawakkul has meaning. 
that we should not rely and attach ourselves to the means themselves. If they produced what we hoped for of that which is good and bright and moral and beneficial, we know that it is by the tawfiq of Allah Azza wa Jal, by the will of Allah Azza wa Jal, by the permission of Allah Azza wa Jal, by the doing of Allah Azza wa Jal. Min qibali Allah Azza wa Jal. And if it didn't, then it is also min qibali Allah Azza wa Jal. Min qibali Allah Azza wa Jal. People do their best so that they don't lose money. And they follow all the paths so that it doesn't happen. And then the market crashes. And they crash inside. Because inside, there was no reliance on Allah, but on their abilities to do things. And the means, and the cause, ولكن أكثر الناس لا يعلمون والله غالب على أمره ولكن أكثر الناس لا يعلمون والله غالب على أمره In other words, everything in this universe is run by him And we have that freedom within And within the way he runs the universe, subhanahu wa ta'ala. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Let us take our break here and we resume inshallah soon.